What's going on, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping back to the channel. You know, I gotta tell you, this modern warfare video that we're about to do here is not one that I expected I was gonna be doing. Now, having said all of that, I'm not gonna be purchasing the full game. Um, and here we are. <laughs> I, you know, what, what can I say? I, I fell, I fell victim to to want, uh, maybe. But uh, ultimately, I've thoroughly enjoyed. For the most part, my experience so far in the first week of playing uh, Modern Warfare 2, um, I bought it a little after it came out uh, because I did wait. I didn't, I, like I said, I didn't expect to get it. But um, I want to go over some things with you guys, and, and there's a lot to like. There's some plenty of not to like as well, but we're going to do the good stuff first. So coming from a background of covering games that are more tactically based, um, you know, over the last year or so, games like Call of Duty have just become less appealing to me. Um, that being said, the multiplayer aspect of Call of Duty, particularly the 6v6 uh, game modes, um, were never all that interesting to, to me. However, there were a couple I never really knew about because I just didn't play the game enough, or the previous titles particularly, but two of them um, specifically, um, that are respawn modes at least, um, are going to provide you something fairly close to tactical. Headquarters and Hardpoint um, are two game modes that really do require more team effort and seem to have a point to them actually, as opposed to just sprinting around a map, fragging players uh, like every other game mode really, really does. And you know, you could argue domination has team aspect, which it does, but there's too often in domination that you notice that the best quote unquote best players in a lobby um, also tend to have the least amount of captures uh, <laughs> for either of the teams and that's always a little disturbing but with these two game modes headquarters and, and hardpoint um, there's a lot to there's a lot to like headquarters to me is easily the best one it's the most team centered of the two um, specifically because what you have to do is there are rotating objectives in the map each team fights to secure uh, that current objective once you've secured it your team is now no longer to respawn the attacking team has to try to clear out all of you guys and then disable that headquarters now while you hold the objective um, you team your team gains points um, in this this play style goes back and forth until somebody wins. I believe it's 250 points. It's really a ton of fun, and it provides some really great games. Hardpoint is a little more casual, but essentially is very similar. It's about it's essentially the same mode, but there is no disabled respawns at any time, and you know the aspect of it being your team has to really know what they're doing in order to hold down something it's still there but it's not there quite as much because the rotations happen quicker um it's a little closer to a single point domination in that way still very cool though and still a, a lot more interesting of a game than let's say tdm kill confirmed even domination or free for all um so you have that and i think if tactical is the thing that you always prefer and you're maybe thinking about getting this game or you'd have it and we're looking for something more fun to do than just the regular run around and kill guys uh, maybe try these things out and get, really get into them give them a chance learn how to play it a little bit and i think you're going to really enjoy it obviously of all the 6v6 multiplayer modes the uh, one life or no respawn game modes are all you know the most hardcore kind of team games but you really you really kind of want to be playing those with a group of people. Um, and if you're like me, who oftentimes is just jumping out by themselves, uh, they might be a little harder to get into without feeling like you're just completely out of your league. But we're going to do some more on those coming up here in the weeks ahead. Uh, but for folks just jumping in, I think these two are the way to go. Since we're still talking about the good parts right now, um, gun customization has had some little amounts of questions here and there, but also I think it's really cool uh, how they've changed it and they've really given players a huge amount of freedom in how they set up their weapons. Now, while it definitely probably could use some cleaning up and a little more clarification on how some things work, um, the idea of bringing in the receiver component, which is an aspect if you're not familiar, um, what you have the option to do is after you've leveled up a weapon to a certain point, um, you're able to reattach it with different receivers that essentially turn into a different gun. So the M4, for instance, starts as the M4, but then you can add an attachment to make it a 
something called the Icarus 556, which is essentially an LMG built on the same platform. So it's an LMG with a lot more mobility. Um, then you've also got one that turns into something called the FSS Hurricane, which is an SMG. And it also uh, has a receiver attachment to become an, an M16. And this sort of principle is applied to most of the weapons in the game um, as far as the, with the assault rifles and battle rifles are concerned. And then there's this thing called tuning, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and you could got to be careful with this because you could tune yourself right out of uh, a weapon that actually worked well into something that works terribly now. But ultimately, the freedom to do this is really cool. And the fact that it's in the game is, is pretty neat. And I think if they just clean up some of the way it works a little bit, I think you're going to hear a lot less complaining about it and a lot more praise for it. Now, there's also a few things that... I really wish weren't in this game and one thing that has been a constant for every Call of Duty I've played since I really was ready to pay attention to stuff like this there's just too much stuff on the HUD in general and there isn't any way to customize it in a way that can minimize any of it really you can change some of the colors which I've done I've made them slightly darker so they just aren't quite in my face as much but I can't change the opacity of anything which really bugs the crap out of me I can't take the kill feed off the screen I can't change the size of the mini map uh, there's just too much shit on the screen to be totally blunt and I would love to be able to have a little more freedom to customize that the overall UI uh, for the game in general is not something I want to talk about too much, but I know how bad it is. I think anybody who's played it knows how bad it is. Um, they're fixing it, they say. Uh, I will see how quickly they do it, but they seems like they've been ahead of this a little bit. Um, they've been listening to people, so let's just leave that where it is. My least favorite thing about Call of Duty games, especially the multiplayer 66 games, was always and still will be Kill streaks. Now, don't get me wrong, when I get them, I use them because why the hell wouldn't you? But man, do they kill, you know, the balance of a game sometimes because the one thing a sweaty lobby needs is to be rewarded with ways to make the players who aren't that sweaty just that much more frustrated and uh, feel like they want to maybe throw their entire system out of a window. It would be really cool if they had a way to play this these game modes um, with the kill streaks off. I'm not sure if that's possible. If maybe you know about ways to do that, let me know. I don't think there. I don't think it is really at this point in time. But that'd be really cool. Just skill-based kills and objective holding, as opposed to getting drone striked. I've also got to bring up this meta that's been become it's it's a call of duty thing for the most part and you see it a little bit in battlefield but it doesn't it's not nearly as effective um or as overpowered but these riot shields are absolutely ridiculous first of all i don't know why people make put riot shields in games and make them able to kill people because you can't kill somebody with a riot shield i'm fairly certain of that unless it's spiked with cyanide Armor piercing rounds should probably be able to go through them. They should make your player significantly slower uh, because if you're going to allow knives to be one hit kills uh, at any distance, essentially, that are close enough to reach them as opposed to having to actually go through the entire animation, these things are just incredibly overpowered and they're they're not they're not balanced right. They're just not fun to play with for people playing against them and. I get it. If you want to use them, that's that's fine. I get it. They work really, really, really well. Too well, in fact. So I, you can't blame you for using them, but I can certainly blame the people who made the game for not being aware of how completely asinine the functionality of them are. All right, you guys, that's it for me today. Thank you so much again for stopping by. I hope you have a great week. Uh, we'll be doing more Modern Warfare content in the future. If, you, if there's anything you'd like me to cover about this game, please let me know. We'll see you then.